Hello and welcome. This is example one of the standard tool calculator training with uh, the refrigeration tool. This example is for a small refrigerated warehouse. The customer has a warehouse uh, to keep their product chilled and the warehouse is well built with uh, little infiltration and pg and &E is working on developing uh, some custom projects through energy audits uh, to try to increase the efficiency of the system. Uh, the system at the customer site is smaller, uh, which means that there's smaller savings and uh, doesn't have a trend system to track uh, key inputs and uh, power usage and, and runtime operations and that kind of stuff that may be prevalent in a larger system. pg and &E has identified through the energy audit that there are a few uh, energy efficiency measures that, can, that they can benefit from. One is from installing uh, VFDs on condenser fans, and the second one is implementing floating head pressure. And the cost for the customer to implement this measure or these measures are uh, around $20,000. So with that example set, I'm going to hand it over to Melina to uh, pull up the calculator and show everybody how to do that and uh, develop the project. All right, Melina, go ahead and take it away. Perfect. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, so let me open the calculator. I have one ready here. Um, so once that you open the refrigeration calculator, you will land on the customer information tab. I won't go over all the inputs because I think that they are self-explanatory. I will just um, say that there are a couple of inputs that they are the most important ones for, for the tool. First is the zip code. Um, of the facility that will determine the climate zone for uh, for the customer. So make sure that you have the right zip code so that we are using the right weather zone for, for the customer. Also, the other two key inputs are the electric and the gas rates, just because we will use this information to do uh, to complete some of the financial analysis. So make sure before uh, you do any of the calculations that the zip code and the electric and in this case mostly electric rate are uh, are uh, included. So in this, for, for if you have watched the HVAC uh, training video, you will see that for the uh, HVAC one, we have different tabs for the different uh, equipment. In this case, we included everything into one tab to make it a little bit more concise and more uh, packed. And so you, the only thing that you have to do is that if you want to open the refrigeration calculator, uh, calculator, just click in here and name your system. So in this case, we are going to call it system, refrigeration system one. And if you have different uh, refrigeration systems, you can always, um, you can always add more than one. Okay, and just quick thing, this is a pretty uh, robust, pretty big uh, calculator, so it might take uh, five, to ten, five to ten seconds for the calculator to open. Uh, we just paused it so that it was a little bit faster. Um, so there, once that you click on that, uh, on this button here, there will be three tabs that will open. The first one is the calculator itself. Uh, the second one is the compressor curve input that we will only use for detailed uh, calculations. And then the third one is the engineering report that will summarize all the savings for, for this project. <clears throat> So let's go to the refrigeration system. Um, just so that you know, these are the different sections of the calculator. First is our input section over here. Um, just so that you know, all the baseline green inputs, they have to be inputted for, for the calculator because that will determine how the system operates right now. The blue ones, the blue cells are not required if you are not uh, estimating the savings for that particular measure. Um, as we said, the yellow uh, before in, in the previous um, recording, you can, so the yellow cells are, uh, are useful for two things. First thing is that it, they help us choose what kind of uh, calculator we want to use, either the detailed one or the simple one, and also they allow us to enable or disable measures. Um, 
the the next section is the kind of like the brain of the of the calculator is this processing section if you don't want to see how things are calculated then you don't have to pay attention and you can close it by clicking in here but uh if you are curious as to how the um how the inputs are, are used then i would say pay attention to this and where are um in the calculation engine here this is where all the calculations happen and so you will be able to review all the all the calculations and lastly here uh, on on the top we have the savings and the consumption for each of the runs that we are going to calculate also here we will calculate the incentives for each of the uh, for each of the measures so let's start with this example this is in a smaller uh, warehouse um, and we are going to use Armonia because that's the, the one that almost everybody has. Let's see. Um, the condenser approach temperature is 12 degrees and the condenser type is air cooled. The majority of the load, as Brian explained in the example, the, this facility uh, has really low infiltration, it's really well built. And so um, when, when we don't have Trend data about the load of the of the on the compressors. What we do is that we can choose either a product load or a weather load. A product load it means that the load in the in the at the site doesn't vary too much. If it's a weather load, it means that there is more infiltration on the on the facility, and the, and then the load varies uh, more with uh, with temperature. So in this case, because there is almost no infiltration, we are going to choose a product load. And now we are going to put how much the capacity of the compressors are. In this case, we only have one compressor, it's 50 tons, and the horsepower is 100. The condensers are five horsepower with a load factor of 80% and efficiency of 90%. And we have two evaporator fans, each five horsepower, and a load factor of 80% and efficiency of 90%. Now we are going to now we are going to define how the uh, system operates. So the first part is uh, defining the type of equipment and what kind of equipment we have, and then we will um, we will um, we will define how to how this equipment operates. One quick thing that I forgot. So the, one of the first things that you have to choose is what kind of data we are going to use for uh, for calculations. In this case, because this customer doesn't have any trend data available, we are going to use the simplified calculator. So let's see if that works. Okay, perfect. So now we know that we are using the simple uh, calculator. In this case, the uh, the condensing the minimum condensing set point is 125. We are going to put that, and that will calculate the minimum discharge temperature later. Um, the baseline condenser fans controls are on and off, and the flooring head pressure there is no uh, there is no flooring head pressure. So in this case, is fixed because that's one of the measures that Pijani found in that facility. Let me see. The, um, the suction, the average suction pressure is 125 PSIG, and uh, we are going to look at the compressor staging. In this case, we only have one compressor, so we can remove this, uh, these compressors. Just so that you know, BL stands for base load compressor, T1 is trim one compressor and T2 is trim two compressor and CP1 is compressor one, compressor two, compressor three, okay? So in this case, we only have one compressor, so this is gonna be our base load compressor. And the compressor type is a screw compressor, so we are going to just choose our compressor here, okay? And the evaporator fans, they are on and off, so the minimum speed is obviously 100%. So we are going to review <clears throat> if we have put all information for our, our refrigeration system, the one that we have now. So we have chosen ammonia, we have one compressor, we have the information for the condenser fans, evaporator fans, and then we have defined how the, um, how the system works. Okay, so 
what we are going to do now is um, choose our measures, and I need to go back and, and, and see what kind of measures the engineer found. So we have two measures, installing BFDs on the condenser fans and implementing flooring head pressure. So let's see. So in this case, what we are going to do is that we are going to enable the condenser, condenser fan BFD measure because we want to calculate the savings for this, and we are going to make, estimate the cost as to $50,000. And we are going to change the condenser fan controls to BFD. The next measure is the flooring head pressure, and we are going to enable, okay. And we are going to say that this flooring head pressure is, let me see, okay, it's, we are going to estimate $5,000. And the proposed is going to be flooring. Okay, so I think that we have everything here, and so I'm gonna click on calculate measures. Just take into account that it might take around 20 to 30 seconds, just because uh, the macros are a little bit more complicated for this uh, for this calculator. So um, we might pause it here. It might be faster in this uh, in this training, but um, it, it might take uh, 20 to 30 seconds when you um, when you calculate it on your computer. So let's go. Okay, so we have calculated our energy efficiency savings for these two measures, the condenser BFD and the flooring head pressure. Um, let's go through some of the results. So um, for the, as, as you can see, the, the savings and the consumption table, they are both, um, they have both a breakdown of how much power the compressor uses, how much the condenser uses, and the evaporators. In this case, because we are installing condenser uh, BFDs on the condenser, we should only see savings on the condenser fan, and this is what we see here. And the, for the flooring head pressure, we can see here that uh, we are saving on the compressors, but there is a penalty on the on the condenser BF, on the condenser fans, which is what we should be uh, seeing. So what we should do next is to uh, calculate the incentives. In this case, uh, we are going to assume that the VFDs have an incentive of eight cents per kWh, and that the flooring head pressure has an incentive of 15, or of 15 cents and 150 dollars per kW. So once that we have that, and we have all the, oh, here I made a mistake here. Okay. Okay, so once that we have this information, we will go to the engineering report and we can create the report for our two measures um, and you, we, can, we can see what kind of information we have. Okay, so just so that you know, click on the create report. You can write the assumptions if you want to put some uh, equations here and also the project notes, whatever you think that it will be important for whoever is reviewing these calculations. And then this is a summary of the system that we inputted in the, in the calculator, and these are the energy savings, um, the, the, the summary of the energy savings. We will also have a financial analysis of the, of the, um, of the measures, and that's why it's so important that we have the utility cost and the measure cost so that we can calculate everything. And we will also give uh, some information about what kind of MMB um, data we will be, it will be required for, um, you know, to, to make sure that the savings are, uh, are happening once that the project is installed. So um, I think that this summarizes the, um, the simplified calculator for this smaller warehouse um, customer. So hopefully this was uh, useful and uh, we will have a second one for a more detailed and more complex uh, facility. Thank you.